Hey all, in this lesson you're going to learn how to use Java array lists and how they compare to arrays. You'll want to know the basics of arrays first, and you can learn about them by clicking on the link. Let's start by creating a standard array and taking a look at it. We can see that we've created an object with a fixed size and memory. If we want, we can change the values in individual indexes. But it's always going to be an array of size 4 unless we replace the entire array. Before we create an array list, we need to import the array list class. We do this right before we declare the current class. Now let's create an array list. The syntax is a bit different. We declare a variable as an array list of a data type, in this case string, and tell it to point at a new array list object. This creates an empty array list of size 0. Unlike an array, an array list will resize itself on demand. If we want to add an object to an array list, we use the add method. There are two versions of the add method. Let's try out the first. For the first version of the add method, we say the name of the array list variable, dot add, and put the object we want to add in parentheses. It will add the object to the end of the list. Let's add a second string. In the other version of the add method, we can specify where we want the new object added. This will put the string tuna into index 1 and slide everything after it down to a new index. The one parameter version of add always returns true, while the two parameter version doesn't return anything. If we want to replace the object in an index with another object, we can use the set command. This replaces the object in index 1 with the string bass. We can also do this with an array. This is a comparable line of code to overwrite the object in index 1 of the array. In an array list, we can also remove an object. This removes the object at index 1 and everything else slides down to fill in the gap. Remove also returns the object that it removes. If you want, you can store the removed object in a variable like this. When you are programming, don't forget that adding or removing an object from an array list causes everything after it to slide down and be renumbered. Forgetting this is a common cause of bugs and missed test questions. You can add an object to an existing index or to one after the last index. For this array list, we could add to index 0, 1, or 2. When removing, you can only remove from an existing index. For this array list, we can remove index 0 or 1. If we want to retrieve a value from an array list, we use the get method. You can either print out the object we retrieve or store it in a variable. This would be a comparable line of code for an array. A limitation of array lists is that unlike arrays, they can only hold object types. For example, we couldn't create an array list of int. To get around this, we use wrapper classes. Wrapper classes encapsulate, or wrap, the primitive value in an object that we can put in an array list. Each primitive type has a corresponding wrapper class. For an int, the wrapper class is integer. For double, the wrapper class is double with a capital D. When you want to store primitive types in an array list, make sure to use the correct wrapper class. In the old days, when we wanted to add an int to an array list of integers, we would have to wrap it up ourselves. Integer.value of 5 would wrap the primitive value 5 into an object that would then get added to the my numbers array list. If we wanted to unwrap it, we would also have to do it manually. My numbers.get0 returns an integer object from the array list dot int value calls the int value method from that object which unwraps and returns the primitive value these days we can use auto boxing that wraps and unwraps the primitive types for us however occasionally auto boxing doesn't work the way we want so it is useful to know the methods to do it manually Another useful feature of ArrayList is we can just print it out. This will give us a reasonable approximation of the ArrayList. If we tried this with an array, we would get gibberish. We can use a for loop to print out the values of an array or ArrayList. Let's start with an array. Here's how we could do it with an ArrayList. Notice the different ways that we access each element. Also notice the different ways we access the length. With an array, we use a dot length without parentheses after it. 
With an array list, we use a dot size with parentheses after it. As a reminder, if we wanted the length of a string, we would use dot length with parentheses after it. If you want to learn more, click on the thumbnail for the next video. Otherwise, check out the full Java playlist. See you in the next video.